The Harry Potter adaptation by HBO has raised many expectations, especially with the fans wanting to see certain subplots from the books that the movies completely ignored. What a lot of fans noticed is how the movies pushed Neville Longbottom's role under the rug, as the books actually hint about him being the chosen one. In the books, Dumbledore mentions that Sybil Trelawney pronounced a prophecy about a child that's going to be equal in power to Lord Voldemort, and that the child would be the chosen one to destroy the reign of the Dark Lord. Interestingly, Snape overhears the prophecy and tells it to Lord Voldemort, which starts his search for that child. The signs of the Chosen One from the prophecy apply to both Harry and Neville, and we can't ignore the fact that Neville had led the army of Dumbledore when Harry left Hogwarts. Besides, he was also the one who won the House Cup for Gryffindor. And it doesn't just end there, because Neville also destroyed the final Horcrux, which made Lord Voldemort so vulnerable that he could finally be ended. The shocking thing is that Lord Voldemort never saw himself in Neville, and that's why he never went after him. However, according to the books, the signs of prophecy were there for a child who was born at the end of July, and whose parents escaped the Dark Lord thrice. These signs apply to both Harry and Neville. In fact, Dumbledore himself told Harry once that Neville could be the one with the power to end the Dark Lord. So, fans want to see the story from a slightly new perspective, with Neville having more screen time and for the show to actually talk more about his importance in reference to the prophecy. Another thing that the movies missed was the dark side of Hogwarts. All the movies somehow glorify Hogwarts as being the place that treats everyone equally, and that it's a safe haven for the wizards, but the books have a very important subplot on the discriminatory side of Hogwarts. It's actually regarding the work condition of the house elves, as hundreds of them perform every little chore at Hogwarts, from cleaning to tending the fire. They have to work for hours in the kitchen, and when Hermione finds out about it, she sets out to help them, and starts a whole new movement for the rights of the house elves. Movies actually skipped over Hermione's whole struggle to get justice for the house elves, although in the books it's a huge part of her storyline. We don't see Harry, Ron, or even Hermione interacting with the house elves in the movie much, but in the books, Harry and Ron spent some time in the kitchen with the elves. So the fans want the Harry Potter adaptation to show the darker side of Hogwarts and how the house elves worked so hard, leading to how Hermione even went on founding the Society for Promotion of Elfish Welfare. Apart from all of this, fans are also hoping that they'll be able to see Winky the Elf. It was a pretty important character in the books, but was completely ignored in the movies. That's mainly because Winky had a very dark storyline, and she was depressed, and even took up drinking while working in the Hogwarts kitchen. Depression and anxiety were very mature themes back then, so the creators preferred not to touch them in the movies. Winky was initially a slave to the Crouch family, and she was even a great inspiration for Hermione, who was struggling to get house elves their rights. If the creators decided to play out the freedom fight storyline of Hermione, then including Winky would be inevitable, because she's one of the most prominent house elves in the books, and even knows a lot of dark secrets of the Crouch family. But the elf storyline isn't the only thing that the movies missed. In fact, they completely skipped over the sinister past of Lord Voldemort and only showed some specific parts of his childhood. But his becoming the immortal Dark Lord is one of the most important storylines of the books, and it's kind of downplayed in the movies. According to the books, Tom Riddle doesn't just become Voldemort overnight. In fact, he has a tough childhood, with his mother Merope being in love with a muggle and using a love potion to make him fall in love with her. But as soon as the potion wears off, he leaves her and their child, the little Voldemort. It causes so much pain to Merope that she soon loses her life, and Voldemort is left all alone in the world. Another important part of Voldemort's life is Morfin and Marvolo Gaunt, his grandfather and uncle. They used to be very cruel with his mother and were even sent to Azkaban for their sinful acts. Both of these were fanatics and believed that muggles are the worst thing that has happened to the wizarding world. On the other hand, Tom had no one to take care of him after his mother lost her life, so he had to grow up in an orphanage that he actually hated a lot. This also made him grow very hostile of both his parents. He ends up taking the life of his own father when he was just a teenager. He also goes on to end his grandfather father and pins it all on Morfin, his uncle. Even when Tom Riddle was a helpless teen, he still had such power and courage that he stole his grandfather's ring and turned it into a horcrux. It is the most important part of Tom Riddle's transformation from a regular teen to the Dark Lord, but the movies haven't even tried to dive deeper into his origin story, and have ignored the role of the Gaunts altogether. And that's why fans have high expectations from the series to at least give some importance to this subplot. Rita Skeeter has a very important subplot in the books, while it isn't high highlighted in the movies. She was the worst kind of journalist there could be, and all she wanted was to get news out of people. She didn't care if it was the truth or not. In Goblet of Fire, she crossed a limit after she destroyed the public image of Harry after portraying him in a bad light. She also took an interview of Hagrid and turned him into a cruel giant in the publication, which caused quite a stir among the parents of the students at Hogwarts. Her publications based on lies were getting out of hand, especially after she accused Harry of pretending to have pain in his scar, and it even made the ministers think 
think that Harry was having hallucinations. So Hermione did some digging and found out that Rita is an animagus and she's not even registered at the ministry, so she decided to use it to her advantage. The animagus form of Rita was a beetle and that's how she used to get all of the hot gossip from Hogwarts because she could easily eavesdrop on others while sitting on the wall. Hermione actually caught her in beetle form and kept her in a small jar for almost a week before making a deal with her. Rita promised to not publish any fake news about them for at least a year. This whole plot line would have added a lot of drama to the series as Rita had quite an influence on everyone in the books. Moreover, the point where the Half-Blood Prince book opens is also a lot of importance, but this whole scene is skipped in the movies. It's the scene where Minister Cornelius Fudge meets with the Prime Minister of the UK. It's played out in a very humorous way because the PM isn't fond of Fudge and especially his dramatic entrances. This scene as an opening sequence is also important, mainly because it tells us how everything is at stake and how Lord Voldemort isn't just a threat at Hogwarts now, but he's also out to get muggles. Fudge tells the PM that the followers of the Dark Lord are causing havoc across England and that their magic can no longer save the lives of innocent people. If played out in the actual show, this scene would explain what the movies omitted, and that's the fact that even muggles notice strange things happening once Voldemort had returned. Besides, a super fun character that was entirely left out of the movie was that of Peeves, although he was featured in all of the seven Harry Potter books and caused quite a stir at the school. Peeves was a ghost who used to cause a lot of trouble and loved annoying others. He was an important part of Hogwarts history, as he was present there since the school was founded, and he used to make life a lot harder for the students at Hogwarts by either changing their flying brooms to mops or by freaking them out in the hallways. The movies didn't include his character, probably because they wanted to reaffirm the role of George and Fred Weasley as the pranksters, but Peeves actually teamed up with them in the books and played some hilarious pranks on the students. And that's not all, because the movies also didn't give the whole origin story of the Marauders. Remus Lupin, Sirius Black, James Potter and Peter Pettigrew kind of formed a secret society back in the day, and they used to wreak havoc at the school. They were kind of the Fred and George of their time, but worse in a way that their pranks were sometimes very cruel. But the movies don't talk about their mischievous past that much and glorify the whole plot line of Sirius and James Potter's friendship. The only thing the movies got right was how James used to treat Snape badly. However, the show could include the aspects of their past that are in the books, including the fact that James Potter had the ability to turn into a stag. And in fact, he turned into one after finding out that one of the marauders, Lupin, was turning into a werewolf, so they all used to turn into animals just to keep him company. This shows us that the marauders had a really deep bond, and it would be really great to see it on screen. Another really important subplot that you should know is that the very first Wizarding War, which is completely downplayed in the movies, it continued for almost 11 years and was probably the worst time in wizard history. The war ended right before Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone started, so we never really got to see how they made the whole army for the war, and how the Dark Lord rose to such a power that all the wizards collectively couldn't defeat him. If the Wizarding War is covered in the new Harry Potter show, then we'll also be able to have an insight on how Voldemort became so intimidating, and why the original Order of the Phoenix got destroyed. We could also see James Potter struggling to remain hidden for a year, as requested by the wizards instead of going into the field and fighting alongside his fellows. So which subplot of the book do you want to be included in the new Harry Potter adaptation? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching.